the beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification hallelujah that's our confidence you have won the victory that's why we make our boast all day long hallelujah he's won it all for you you have won it all for me sing it one more time with faith in your heart hallelujah hallelujah an encounter with the word of God every true miracle every true breakthrough every true blessing begins with an encounter listen to me please pay attention to what I'm teaching you you've been suffering for too long pay attention pay attention and get out of this thing there is a way out others are testifying you are the only one who is left pay attention and get out of this thing once and for all. There is a way of escape. There is a way of escape. The Bible says the labor of the fool weary yet every one of, of them. Because they do not know the road to the city. Not because there is no road. There is. There is. Your prayer point is already somebody's testimony. It means God is able. Hallelujah. If God has changed SS to AA and you are here seated with SS, is, is it such a big deal? Is it such a big deal? Or a job? Beyond your wildest imagination. So pay attention. An encounter with the word of God is the starting point of any miracle. And now I, I will explain to you when we talk of an encounter with the word of God, we are not just saying you read your Bible because you've been reading it for a long time. We are not just talking of um, reading your Bible and, and looking at it. Wow, I found this. No, an encounter means something happens to you. There is a light that leaves that word. The ministry of the word of God is the first way out of any predicament in life. Please get me. The ministry of the word of God. There are some of us here right now. We are trusting God for jobs. 
and I know that if all of a sudden I announce now and I say our daddy prophets in this place there are some of our, our fathers scattered around great influential men our fathers our mothers people who with one call can give you a job I say all those who want jobs come and stand here you greet daddy many of you will already be jumping you say I God bless koinonia but but do you know do you know do you know do you know that I told you about the Illuminati and the secret societies right by the privileged position of being called into an apostolic ministry it affords me the opportunity to study other religions and study a lot of false activities of darkness not necessarily to pervert my faith but so that I can bring the body of Christ into accuracy look up please don't let any man fool you I was teaching someone today I think it was Pastor Femi listen every one successful person who has been empowered by the devil please listen to me everybody who has been empowered by the devil had an encounter with something that represented him are you getting my point i shared with you about the 2300 ancient manuscript that they found that it had magical powers upon it that if you only took that book and just read the title alone, fortunes will begin to follow you. There are people on earth today with those evidences. Those secret societies recruit people. They select people specially every year. And it's by divination they select them. So when they select you, they get across to you. You will not know how, but they will call you. They will say, you have hereby been invited. Your life is about to change. They don't ask you whether you believe them or not. They give you access to read some of those materials. You step out immediately and you will see calls coming, alerts coming, opportunities. Look at me. If you ever think prosperity is just about job or business, you are joking. There is a spiritual agency that makes things work in the natural. Are you getting what I'm saying? This, this, is what, this is what I've been crying about for years that the body of Christ gets. It's not just about physical things. There is a spiritual factor that makes things work. Is somebody learning something? An encounter with the word releases something. People just read a book, right? And something comes upon them they cannot explain. All of a sudden, they come out and you are drawn to withdraw money and give them. Just like that. All of a sudden, you stand up and begin to advocate their case. What, what sort of life is that? Look, they that know their God, they are the ones who will be strong. It's not about age. Listen, it's not, it's not even entirely just about education and I have a great deal for academia and, and all of that. But let me tell you, there is a reality that predates our existence. And if you do not know it, you will be a victim in this life. Psalm 82 from verse 5. The Bible says, they know not, neither will they understand. I have spent my life studying the laws of the spirit. I have literally committed my life to explore these ancient mysteries what was the secret of ancient men what made them mighty what made them great and i found out that every mighty man then and now stands upon a spiritual advantage there is a pedestal in the spirit that sponsors their audacity is someone hearing what i'm saying you don't just tell somebody be healed and he gets healed. Brothers and sisters, human beings are not idiots. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I can't just look at this lady and say your story will change. And then it changes. Come on. I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. See, this is the dynamics of miracles. I'm explaining to you the inner workings of the miraculous. It happens because all that you see is not all that there is this realm is a three-dimensional realm physics tells us and is limited the realm of the spirit has other dimensions 
meaning there are other possibilities beyond the scope of our intellect are you getting what i'm saying yes this is the realm of wisdom that kings reign by he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice he said with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness tonight it's not just for you to receive a miracle but to empower you that when you make a statement there is an understanding that forces that statement to come to pass hallelujah when you talk to people about finances the first idea that comes to their mind is business is that not true what business okay real estate okay stocks okay this and that i've said it again and again again and again that I don't care what business you do or what job you are having you will struggle forever until there is a spiritual factor that is at work are you getting me yes the bible says you have an unction from the holy one he said that unction can teach you isaiah 48 from verse 17 he says i am the lord thy god that teach thee to profit and lead you in the way that you should go there is an anointing this heat and run trial and error life must end tonight we can walk circumspectly on the strength listen you can be 70 years old and have an error about life for that long are you getting me a whole nation can be wrong our society we transfer knowledge upon the strength of what we know or what we have been told when man ran away from god he said adam where are thou genesis 3 he says the lord had the talking spirit the voice of god walking in the cool of the day and he said adam where are thou he said i heard thy voice but i hid because i was naked he said who told you meaning your life is a summation of the informations you have gotten and you have believed but could it be that what you have held as truth all your life may not necessarily be accurate taught by well-meaning people there is the life of the kingdom and there is the life of this world system cosmos we are not the same it says you are in the world but you are not of the world there is a plane of reality you must function for hallelujah So number one, an encounter with the world. You need an encounter with the world. The word of God does three things among many other things. Please write. Number one, the word of God shows you the basis upon which you will receive any promise. The word of God shows you the basis. The realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Everybody say legal realm. So, you don't just, you can play crooks in the earth realm here, but not in the realm of the spirit. Everything is done legally and legitimately. If you ever see anything manifest itself, certain laws were applied. Praise the Lord. So, the word of God shows you the basis. Remember in our, our series, uh, the teaching, Give Me This Mountain. I teach about the spiritual dimension of life that there are gates on every mountain everybody say there are gates on every mountain when you get to that mountain of breakthrough there are gates it will not just open because you are a christian when jesus in psalm 24 was about to come out from the grave the bible says there were gates the psalmist saw it i said lift up your head O ye gates and be lifted, O ye ancient doors. Did they open? No, sir. They asked a question. Who is this king of glory? Give us the basis of your audacity. Upon what are you standing? And he says, he is the Lord, strong and mighty. The one who just defeated darkness. And the gates opened. So when you stand to receive the miracle, oh God, change my story from SS to AA. There will be a question in the spirit. Upon what strength? That's the parable that Jesus was given. The parable, right, of two men who built houses. One upon sand, the other upon a rock. Two houses were built. 
but what supported them became the distinguishing factor praise the lord the basis it's important for you to know the basis let me tell you very straight and uh, in a in a way that does not require any confusion everybody writes the finished work of christ this is the basis this is the reason it is the one master factor the finished work of christ i love jesus i love jesus many of us need to meditate on what he really did for us do you know that it is on the strength of what happened on the cross the way access the veil has been torn and it's given us access access revelations 5 revelations 5 verse 9 very quickly please let's hurry up so that we can do much tonight revelations 5 and they sang a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. It says for thou was slain. And you have redeemed us unto God. How? By thy blood. That's the basis. The substitutionary work of Christ. I told you. You can get our teaching the speaking blood. I told you blood is a key in the spirit. Is that true? Blood is a key in the spirit. Everybody's blood. Can open certain doors. But not every door. That's why when you go to a herbalist, he will, he will calculate by divination and tell you the kind of blood that will open the gate you want. So the blood of Jesus is the greatest because it is the master key. There is no door that it cannot open. It says, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, verse 10, It says, and has made us unto our God kings and priests. And as a result, we shall reign. Everybody say dominion. He has given us access to dominion. Access to dominion. Praise the Lord. So when you study the word of God, it gives you the basis. So when you stand and say, I'm tired of this cancer. Or I'm tired of this barrenness. It's been five years have not been able to take in the realm of the spirit will ask you so upon what now do you believe you will take in and you tell them there is a key that has opened that door there is a key the blood of the eternal covenant hallelujah everybody say the blood of jesus is my access to my inheritance one more time say the blood of jesus is my access to my inheritance you're not just saying it after me you are confessing say the blood of jesus is my access to my inheritance hallelujah that's the reason why you get married that's the reason why the devil must leave tonight that's the reason why the genotype must change that's the reason why every prophetic word that comes upon you must produce result. That's the reason why as many of you standing outside, although you are far, but the ministry of that blood can still speak. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. Not just because preachers said the blood is powerful. I have a revelation of the significance of the blood. Revelation is powerful. It produces true faith in your spirit. So that you are not believing blindly. You are believing upon the strength of an understanding. So the blood of Jesus is your basis for receiving breakthroughs. And when we stand up to pray and we begin to challenge the gates of hell. You don't stand weak. And you are wondering and say, do you know nobody in my family has crossed this barrier? You say, well, I couldn't cross it, but that blood created a divide and I must walk past it. Look, let me tell you. The Bible says, let me show you something. Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah. Let's look at Isaiah. Isaiah. Help me, Holy Spirit. Isaiah 41, verse 21. 
I saw this scripture in 2004 and it changed my life. Isaiah 41, 21. Everybody read. One to read. Look, God is speaking like a judge in a law court. Are you getting me? He said, produce your cause. He said, bring forth your strong reason. Give me a scriptural basis to bless you. Justify your qualification to step into a new level. You don't say that just by jacking yourself. You lift up the blood and say, this is my basis. This is my basis. Upon the strength of what your son did, he has given me access to health. He has given me access to the blessing of the Lord. Praise God. Number two, an encounter with the word of God brings you to agree with God. It brings you to agree with God. We call that, listen, we call that alignment and transformation. Alignment and transformation. Somebody come. Please look for that scripture for me. With God, all things are possible. Right? Somebody come. Anybody? Watch this. An encounter with the word of God. Remember I told you in our teaching yes, um, last week, right? The reality of what? Spiritual laws. I told you that no man can activate any law by himself. Is that true? A spirit entity, either the Holy Spirit or another spirit must walk with you. So in the realm of the spirit, partnership is the order of things. You cannot do anything alone. Either a demon spirit or the spirit of God must assist you. So the Bible says, you are yet to find it. Matthew, Matthew 19, 26, media. Are you getting my point now? The problem with many people is that we are far apart. This is where God is standing. This is God's mindset. Right? He says, as far as the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts, my ways. Is that true? So this is God standing. And he's saying, come and join me. But she's standing here and saying, Lord, I need you to help me. And God is saying, it's against the law. You have to find come i supply grace you take advantage of that grace and come when we are together so the bible says with god come with god all things become possible so without god nothing becomes possible so that cancer with god becomes possible you see that are you getting my point that admission with God. The Bible says with God. So koinonia miracle service with God will produce result. The, 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 this is the mystery. This is the mystery of impact with God. Acts 10 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Bible says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed. Why? For God was with the Bible says, and the Lord walking with them. This is the mystery. Divine assistance coming into God's realm. You no longer become an enemy of your own destiny. And we call that alignment and transformation. That's one of the major ministries of the word. So the word of God begins to advocate a superior mindset. Higher and greater than the ideology you've held on to. It may be cultural. It may be intellectual. Right? It may be societal. But when the word of God begins to judge you, it shows you the excellency of God's own mindset. And it's up to you to say, Lord, although this is all I've believed my, all my life. For instance, there are people who are here with certain terminal diseases and they have been told they've lived all their lives believing they didn't even come for the miracle service for that specific case to be healed they came for something else right 
because according to their mind it has not yet become a possibility that God can address that issue but when he looked at the tomb where Lazarus had been buried he said roll away the stone prove that I can raise Lazarus back by you going to open up that case that you have closed praise the Lord I believe God I'm a believer I truly believe him Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 says trust in the Lord with all your heart it says lean not on your own understanding the next verse says in all your ways not some he didn't say talk to him he says acknowledge him you acknowledge a man by giving him preference he says and as a result he will direct your path next verse says be not wise in your own understanding he says fear the Lord and turn away from evil hallelujah very important so with God this lady may be weak unable to do anything but with God with God she may be broke suffering nothing is working but all of a sudden she comes and she finds out that there is he that scattered and yet increases. There is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty. She begins to learn the ways of God that he can open up the heavens. That it is the blessing of the Lord. Not your business. It is the blessing. The blessing makes everything you do prosper. That's why it says whatsoever he doeth prospers. So it's not about what you are doing. It's about the spiritual factor that supports what you are doing. So with God, with God, she suddenly becomes powerful. All of a sudden doors of favor open up to her because she has chosen to leave her old mindset and come to God. Listen to me tonight. The first miracle you need to have is to give up on your ideologies and say, Lord, I'm tired because your life is a reflection of your ideologies. I don't care what the situation is. I told us last week that your environment will eventually become a reflection of what? Your belief system and your ideology. He said, let this mind, Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, let this mind, the word let there is permit. Permit this mind. Please, I know that you came from Kaduna State and Kaduna State, there may be a way you thought about in your village. I know that you came from from the east and there is a way that they thought i know that you come from the west i know that you come from katsina tonight will you choose to become a citizen of the kingdom by adopting the ideologies of the king subscribe to a new government every government has an economic system every government has a political system every government has a welfare system if you've been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall your heavenly father? But that law is only operational for the sons of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The word of God brings you into alignment. Listen, when I begin to study the word of God, or when she begins to study the word of God, and she finds out that there is an ideology that she has that fights against the word of God, you will be foolish to argue with the word of God. The word of God predates our existence. It has been tried through dispensations. The word of God is a description of his character. His operation with man. And I told you that the efficacy of the word transcends Genesis 1. It's beyond that. It predates Genesis 1. I told you Genesis 1 is not the first creation. We've, we've settled that, right? Job 38. Those of you who are just coming. This is Koinonia. Get the series. Hallelujah. That there, there is a lot of creation. Genesis 1, uh, Isaiah 38 begins to give us how the foundation of the earth was created. Praise the Lord. The question I'm asking you is, I know you want God to bless you, but could it be that the devil that needs to go out today is not the one in your village? Is the one that has stayed in your mind like a stronghold. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To what? The pulling down of strongholds, casting down every yazar, imagination, 
and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Praise the Lord. So we have been given a poverty mentality as Africa. We have been taught that until you are 25 or 30, don't think about finances, don't think about blessing, don't think about empowerment. And you are told that you are too young to carry the power of God or you are a lady, you shouldn't carry the power of God. These are the ideologies that cosmos markets to us, but you must refuse it. Say, I refuse. Shout it, I refuse. I refuse. Mm. You must refuse it. You must refuse it. Who told you you were naked? Who told you you were naked? I honor the doctors, but do you know that there are many people who, are, who have several sicknesses, but it never affects them because they do not have a medical report to validate it? You went to check headache. They said, my brother, this thing is more than a headache. You mean you would have died now? We have a lot of doctors here. Doctors, I love you. Praise the Lord. But now when you check and they tell you, huh, do you know that your liver is almost, in fact, you say, you, you mean it? Hi! From that time, your liver starts paining you physically. Right? And then the doctor tells you, you have two weeks to live. All of a sudden, Somebody says, there's an opportunity. God is lifting us. They let him lift you there. I'm dying. I believe the report of the Lord. I believe the report of the Lord. See, listen. You don't see with your eyes. You see through your eyes. There is a spiritual agency for sight. You only see through these physical eyes. It's not what you see with. They are just the physical components that enable your true spiritual eye to see. And Paul prayed that that eyes be flooded with light. Praise the Lord. So we need alignment. That's why you can pray for people. Pray for them. Lay hands on them. Do whatever you want to do. Did you know that sometimes you finish praying and then the people walk right back because their mindset betrays what God wants to do in their lives. That's what happened to the nation of Israel. Right? Everything you have told Moses we will do oh, after two weeks. They say, Kai! A, a delegation comes and they say, Moses, we, we need an explanation and bring Baal. Make something for us that we can see. This mysterious God who comes with smoke, we don't know this one. Please, make something we know. They limited God in the wilderness. A man's mindset can limit God as mighty as he is. I refuse to limit you. I refuse. Number three. The word of God, an encounter with the word of God shows you your part of the deal. It shows you the part you have to play to commit God to a performance. Never forget this. There is a part that you have to play, brothers and sisters. Every promise in scripture requires a partnership on your own part. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1. It says, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day. Right? And then it talks about um, you being exalted above all the nations and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. If there is a condition. Isaiah 119. If ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Not if ye be hungry and desperate. If ye be what? Willing. There is a condition there is a condition there are always conditions so an encounter with the word reveals to me my part of god's prosperity package lord you want to bless me what is my role right i want to step into levels of the anointing the word of god shows me is see reading the word is like walking in your promised land it says walk left and right see everything as far as your eyes have seen so you read studying the word of god is like touring your promised land and you come back and say lord as i read i found this and that and god says all right here's the condition everything 
is yours for a taking. You can enter a restaurant. Immediately you enter the restaurant, you see a lap of an ugly chicken and you start smiling. But you came there with 100 naira. There is a condition. You want to be a possessor. You want to make that thing become a present reality. There is a price tag. Nobody stops you. There's no policeman to stop you. But you can watch it like a museum and salivate and watch. Right? And nothing happens. You may be 30 years, but a little baby will come with his father and he say, Mommy, I like this. And whatever he likes, keep giving it to him. The container did not refuse to open. Your part. I know you are laughing because I spoke about food, but get the revelation because the issue in your life is more than food. Praise God. Oh God, change my story. God says, Come, let me show you your part of the deal. You say, God, I don't want you. Are, you have died for me. Mm -mm. Listen, listen, listen. Making the word of God work in your life, making that which he has done to work in your life will require a participation on your own part. Please understand this. Praise the Lord. Are we following? So these three things. Tonight, as you are seated here, there are some of us the reason why certain levels of breakthrough have not come into our lives is because we have not been able to support our claims in prayer with a basis. You have, you have always every power challenging me. You better leave. Because of what? Why should they leave? Do you know what brought them in the first place? They were there before you were born. So I came to Koinonia. Every demon, I'm tired of you. <laughs> That's not what drives them. You, you don't, they don't go because you are tired. 38 years, that man was lying down at a pool. That wicked spirit did not say, Kai, 37, 38, oh yeah, let me allow you, you have tried. You would have remained there forever. In five minutes, five minutes, meaning time does not change anything. Light is what changes things. It will change tomorrow, you are wasting your time. Arise and shine, not because you are tired of sitting, Isaiah 60, for thy light is come. Are you getting blessed? So there are some of us here, what you need is to understand a revelation of what Jesus Christ has done. You think the reason why you may get everything is because you are bold or because you are prayed. It's not that. There is a revelation. The blood of Jesus. For years I heard Ren had Bonke talk about the blood of Jesus so much. He, he equated blood and fire. And I didn't, I couldn't quite get it until I found out that blood was a key in the spirit. That's why every religion has blood as part of their component. This is the one factor that every religion agrees upon. Blood. Hallelujah. And there are some of us here, the problem is our mindset. God wants to bless us, he wants to lift us, but there is a mindset. Oh, I'm a lady. Oh, I'm coming from so so and so, I cannot even speak English. Oh, this and that and that and that. I've not even gotten admission. Or, oh, me, I just want a little this. Oh, I made that and that. Huh? Or, God, I want you to bless me, but it must happen through NMPC. If you are Lord, it must happen through NMPC. They limited God. You are asking God for a cup and he wants to give you an ocean. Hallelujah. That's the problem with the body of Christ. Our faith is what I call auxiliary faith. Faith that is standing on something. Tied to the neck of your uncle. So every time you say, Lord bless me, what you mean is press that uncle's neck until he responds to me. Your faith is not really standing upon the word of God. Your faith, every time you say, Lord, I, 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 I know you are changing my story. What you are simply saying, oh Lord, I know my uncle will not sleep until my... No, no, no. Why don't you give him the option to bring the strategy? And you say, Lord, I don't care how it will be done. I may not see wind. I may not see rain. But one thing I know. Because let me tell you, your strategy is most of the time carnal. But his strategy becomes spiritual. When he gives you a strategy, it may look foolish. But that's the way he has chosen it. Right? Go around Jericho. That's the strategy. Oh, I'm already ahead of myself. The second way to receive a miracle, or the second platform now first is an encounter with the word of god second is the ministry of prayer the ministry of prayer 
is part of the equation to receiving a miracle there must be the ministry of prayer it does two things number one prayer challenges the forces of darkness fighting against the manifestation of the promise in your life Ephesians 6 verse 12 the Bible clearly tells us that we are not alone in this world we have strangers who are trying to escort us every day every time wicked spirits stratified in different cadres right so you are always not alone the devil attempts to seek entrance into different dimensions of your life and given the opportunity he will wreck your life the goal to mock the testimony of god in your life praise the lord so there are giants on every mountain please don't let anybody fool you there are giants on every mountain if you get into a mountain and the door is already open somebody already killed the giant but there were giants there for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities powers rulers of darkness spiritual wickedness in heavenly places the stratification of the demonic kingdom so between you and your breakthrough there are giants it takes the ministry of prayer hallelujah when you pray you authorize heaven to look into your situation because god is not committed to step into your situation without your asking him to genesis 1 26 from the day he said let them have dominion but god is supposed to know now doesn't he love me well it will not change the bones kept staring at ezekiel until something happened praise the lord you come for miracle service and you find out that as the word is coming like this there are still people seated oppressed of demons right some of these demons are hearing what i'm saying now they are just shaking but they are not going yet let's see if we will go must we really go yes by the time we begin to pray we activate the energy the force right it's a force of compliance it brings everything to the obedience of christ so that's why you need to pray you pray to command the forces of darkness that are stopping your access to bow number two this is an even greater reason why we pray prayer reveals the exact and the unique strategy to bring the promise to manifestation please never forget this when you pray in the place of prayer god reveals to you his unique strategy for you so you have walked through scripture and you have seen that god has told you that you are to walk in breakthrough but now the bible may not give you the nitty gritty of what to do in your unique situation prayer when you begin to pray the spirit of god begins to search the mind of god concerning your situation and the bible says how that he searches all things and he prays according to the will of god so you begin to pray and then the lord tells you okay now this is the strategy you are going to meet benga benga will introduce you to femi and femi will introduce you to prof that's how the miracle will come it is a strategy for only you somebody will do it and fail are you seeing why prayer is powerful this is this is am i blessing you in my opinion i think this is already a miracle for somebody i'm showing you the loopholes some of us have seen the promise you have agreed with god but the problem is the strategy in ancient times kings won war not on the strength of their army but the dexterity of their strategy 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 so joshua stood still and god began to give him the strategy he said joshua this is how we we'll throw this wall down walk around seven times did you ever see that repeated in the bible because it was a strategy right he told gideon take the people by the riverside and let them take water study the way they take water you will use it as a separation strategy somebody has come tonight to receive strategy lord how do i complete this house you calculated your salary based on your salary to take 10 years and god says i can show you a strategy the bible says then was the secret revealed unto daniel a wicked king slept in the night dreamt and forgot it and was going to punish people for his forgetfulness 
right and a man called daniel one of the greatest prayers that i've been praying in this season is lord's strategy it is all about strategy i'm telling you god will show you something that does not make sense but it's his strategy for you everyone will do it and fail but it's what you will do and you will walk on hallelujah so you look at that business and you are praying and God will say, uh-uh, my strategy for you is take that business out of where you are. Take it to another place. Isaac already knew he had the blessing upon him, but he needed a strategy, right? That's why every time kings would fight, they would go and inquire, what is the strategy for this war? They will not use yesterday's strategy for today's war. They will fail woefully. And so they will go, should I pursue? And the Lord will say, this is how it will happen like in the days of Jehoshaphat, put worshippers in front. Other times he said, walk around seven times. Other times he said, just be still. Get a stone and sit down and watch what I will do. Strategy. Question. The strategy you are using for your life now, who gave you? I saw another man do it, you see. He just went and started selling tomato. You see, it, God said he will bless you. But what drove you into it? A man must work. Don't stop those kind of demonic thinking. There must be a strategy. Oh Lord, change my story. I think I'll start selling shoes. Just like that. Just like that. The Bible says, as they began to pray, the Holy Ghost said, separate me Paul and Barnabas. If they were to choose, they would have carried somebody else. Right now, when we begin to pray, I am convinced that God will begin to reveal strategies for people. Hmm. Strategies on how to make the rain work. Some of you, listen, students, there are students here that all you need is one strategy. There is a course, everybody has told you this course, and you are face to face with that Goliath. You've been running away, but right, you are there now. You need a strategy. Hallelujah. There are some of you, maybe your project, a supervisor may be difficult, and God can give you a strategy. The strategy may not necessarily be a direct revelation from the spirit. It can be light. A one scripture imprints in your spirit as you are praying. Oh God, what do I do about this, my supervisor? Suddenly a scripture comes. The gift of a man makes room. You quickly go and package wine. Not to bribe the man. You are responding to a strategy. Ordinarily, he would have thrown you out with your wine. But because you are doing it as a strategy will laugh and say why did you have to do that what is even your name you have been disturbing me it's a strategy hmm. Lord, give me strategy. you will see men do foolish things that don't make sense that's what god told us when when we wanted to start giving access to our messages i went to the lord and the lord told me he said make sure you do not sell any message keep the videos give out the mp3s that's the strategy right you may do it for your ministry and you will lose a lot of money. The blessing God has tied for your ministry, you would, but, but it is a strategy. It's a strategy. When I said, Lord, what is the key to the publicity and the increase and the expansion of this ministry in terms of membership? God gave me a strategy. It's not a secret. Mark 1, 2, 3. You may apply it and it may not work for you, but that's what the Lord gave. And this is the mystery behind what you see. I like you as you are seated before we stand pray in one minute speak to the lord what is the strategy lord my family has been struggling over this issue for years every time they want to build there is no money what is the strategy please take what i'm saying seriously one strategy can change your situation not just a strategy you read from a book one strategy there is an easier way of doing it. That you have not seen it does not mean it's not there. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. In 24 hours, by the strategy of the Spirit, He gave victory. Please pray. God has shown you your destiny helper, but He's not paying attention to you. One strategy will answer the question. Pray. God has shown you the business he wants you to do. But as it is, you try and try. You need strategy. 
It's not like you didn't hear God. The ministry of prayer. You have been reading and reading. You did well in 100 level. 200 level. By 300 level, you started moving back. Because you need to change strategy. You need to go to his majesty. To show you. Strategy. 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 Please pray. For your ministry. Sister. You don't need all the money you think you need. What you need is a strategy from the spirit. Believe me. You have tried every idea you know. You have tried everything they have told you. Why don't you cry before God? Come on now, pray. Koinonia. Reveal unto me the strategy. My family is suffering. There is witchcraft in my family. They have vowed. But my father will not listen. What is the strategy for the deliverance of my family? Everybody in my family is an unbeliever. But I've seen in visions and dreams that they will all be saved. Between the promise and the manifestation, what is the strategy? Lord, I've applied for job everywhere. Civil defense, immigration, everywhere. What is the strategy? Hallelujah. Strategy. The last thing I'll talk about when we stand up, we're going to do a quick walk. Very, very quick walk. The last step towards the manifestation of a miracle is that you must take action. Take action. I want everybody to listen to me carefully because God is about to speak to us in a very definite way now. I hope you have been blessed so far. Take action. There are two enemies of action that are found from scripture. Number one, fear. Fear. Everybody say fear. Fear is a dangerous and wicked spirit. There are multi-millionaires sitting listening to me now. But fear has stopped them from taking action. There are many families you would have finished building your house since. Not just a bungalow that will kill you. There are people seated here. If you took the step God told you last year, you would have been feeding your family this year. Fear. Tonight, I'm showing you all the things. That there is work to do tonight. Are you getting my point? Everybody shout, I reject fear. Oh, fear does not respect age. Children, fear. Adults, fear. Great men, fear. Macho men, fear. Intelligent people, fear. Right now, Africa is afraid. Nigeria is afraid. Many people are afraid. The dollar is crashing. Everybody is afraid. You don't know what to do, right? There's fear everywhere. When the devil, when God tells you, get up and build a house, this year, that house must be built. And all you have is 100,000. And you calculate and you find out that the building will cost 7 million. And you are laughing. You say, God, don't disgrace me. Let the people in the village not say, I'm stupid. Take action. Listen, the Bible says, this sign shall follow, not go before. You will never see the hand of God till you stand up and move. This is somebody's, this is a word from God to someone. You have refused to move. Fear. You wrote jam nine times. You didn't get it. God is saying this time you will get it. You say, I'm not ready. I better go to the restaurant and eat food with that money. See that? Fear. Are we getting blessed? Let's look at two scriptures. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. Take it high, please. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. Please help us, media. Let's really hurry up. We have to hurry up. Because we have some prayer to do. Are you seeing the things that are limiting us? Truly, I am determined this year to see that every one of us has a testimony. If nothing changes in your life this year, then it's your fault. But as far as the principles that will guarantee for you to experience the rain, by the grace of God, I will do my best. 
For God had not given us the spirit of fear. Put your name there. Just that first clause. One to read. One more time. Praise the Lord. There are many of our loved ones. 45 years. Brother, are you ready to get out of your father's house? I preached a message in 2008. It was a classic. Come out of your father's house. Thought-provoking message to challenge people to leave their comfort zone. There are some of us, 30, 35, 40, who are still a big liability to our parents at home. Or God come out and say, what I have now is 20,000. Come out. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have sown seeds, you are giving. Look, let me tell you, if I am a father, my, when my child gets to a certain age, one day, he will just come and say, young man, in the name of Jesus, I release the blessing upon you. Go out. Out. That's it. I'm, I'm very serious. See, you need to push yourself out of your comfort zone this year. It's not just to say it's the year of the rain. Stand up and take action. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Change, change what you have been doing. Kill fear. Take action and die doing it. Queen Esther, God took her to the palace. God removed Vashti and brought her for the salvation of Israel. But when Mordecai spoke to her, her man is plotting against these people. You better go and meet the king. She said, ah, please, oh, me too. His, his, his brig, they brought me here. Please, I'm not ready to face any embarrassment. And Mordecai said, sit down there in fear. Paraphrasing. Sit down there. When they finish with us, the Jews, they will now say, all of you in this palace, bring your bio data. And they will find out you are a Jew too and they will kill you. And she said, if I perish, I perish. This is the year some of us are going to say, if I, I'm writing that jam again. Is God speaking to somebody? I'm writing that jam again. This is the year. But I tried the business, I failed. You will do it again this year. Master, we have cast, he said, we have cast the net of, how did you put it now? Right? We have toiled all night. He said, nevertheless, at that I was going to get married. The person even did introduction. Later he called and he said he's not doing it again. And now one godly brother is saying, I'm serious. He said, you look like that guy. Stand up and take action. Otherwise you sit down and not get married all your life. In the name of Jesus, you will take action this year. Praise the Lord. There are some of us, God is speaking. Fear. Fear. Do you know fear puts people in bondage? more people die there are many sicknesses today that are as a result of fear and worry is that true what you are afraid of has not happened but you are you are almost dying from today now people have started running out of zaria for instance you can go if you want to go what I, <laughs> of course i'm not teaching you to be careless and just roam around but, but oh, come on now people fear everything you are sleeping in the night. You just light. Maybe it's the cloth you hung that just tilted in a way. Say, I, I don't like the way this cloth. Why is it tilting and coming back? Who is there? <laughs> Fear. Fear has made people to say yes when they would have said no. And they committed themselves into things you have no business committing yourself. Fear. One of my friend's father. Listen, true story. One of my friend's father, they would have been the earliest people to start pure water business in Nigeria. When God gave him that idea, it was in a full gospel businessmen's fellowship. Right? The idea came and he laughed. Thai water, haba. Who will pay for water? Are we idiots? There is stream, there is sun, there is light, there is stove to warm water. And he refused to take action. And certain people took action. Do you think those who took the action are, are crying now? This year, you must take a handkerchief as you are crying, be moving. Are you getting my point? You must challenge that devil. You have not broken through certain barriers. Nobody has ever crossed to the university in your family. Now you finish secondary school, for instance, and you are about to take that step, and, and everybody said, Just you have tried. You got diploma in, in, in software application. Are you not okay? You are ahead. 
yet every time you sleep you see a phd and the devil is telling you cannot move tonight we have come to call that devil a liar in the name of jesus christ say i will take action say i will take action that's right the second thing that stops action is laziness everybody say laziness my goodness our time is gone laziness very important proverbs chapter 10 verse 4 please proverbs 10 verse 4 and then later on we would look at proverbs 22 verse 13 media please don't forget proverbs 10 verse 4 there are some of us the demon that needs to fly out of our life today not jump out fly out and never return is that spirit of laziness that inertia to move forward some of us sheer laziness the bible says he become poor that dealeth with what you never stay around me and you become lazy i have zero tolerance for lazy people a young man of 30 years by 11 30 12 he's still snoring on the bed you will beg for bread for sure there is no amount of fasting that will change that if you don't change it there are many lazy people we like a wolf free things look let me tell you there is a place for diligence if you must see the rain fall upon you this year are we getting blessed he become a poor that deals with a slack hand but the hand of the diligent does what there are some of you you are experts at begging day and night you beg everybody right please bros i beg you get 5k help me next time sister sorry i'm just knowing you don't be embarrassed i need 2k you you degrade yourself because of this devilish attitude of laziness there are grasses in people's houses to go and weed there are things to do but you get up and believe you're a big boy big boy with nothing in your pocket you calm down don't try to look successful pay the price and be successful hallelujah are you getting blessed you must reject laziness there are some students you see how some students live you think you think that they are professors right 10 or 11 exams is in one week and you see the person just strolling with his boxers go and fetch a, 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 a bucket of water lazily he cannot even wait at the tap you turn somebody else's water drag himself to the bathroom come out 30 minutes later huh dirty boxers dirty singlets you can't wash it laziness all around you can't get up and sweep your room and some of our sisters are like that who do you want to marry tall dark and handsome he must be a millionaire you think god doesn't have sense he said do not be deceived god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man sows there are many people see look let me tell you sometimes you may see me you see some of the things we are doing and you just don't be deceived by this this ever water if you want it come and carry it there is it there is more than this are you getting my point first thing tomorrow morning we are leaving for katsina it takes work it's not just anointing it takes diligence please you need to talk to yourself and say this year the spirit of laziness i curse you out of my life curse you out of my life an assignment you can do now you sit down and say i will do it on wednesday you get zero right another assignment you get zero they just they they solve a question in class they say just copy it and get 10 marks they say i will do it later on. look procrastination you must attack it this year hallelujah you are working in the office of your boss because you think you come for koinonia and the person you are working for is here it's no guarantee to be lazy i will fire you i employ you you are not doing what i employ in the name of jesus i will fire you and you will come back and you will hear me preach absolutely absolutely there is truly no food for a lazy man let me tell you the truth you must get up and and be serious about your destiny and work there are some of us this year you have no business with relationship 
if you are passing and you see any beautiful lady just say blood of jesus and pass because this year is a year to you your own reign is coming to give you grace to stand up no responsible parent will give a daughter to somebody who doesn't know where he's going are you hearing what i'm saying very important but i believe that as we contend tonight in this miracle service, it's going to be a very fast walk. For me, I think this, this is it happening to you. If, if we close right now, I believe that you would have left with something. Many of us here belong to this category, this laziness category, right? Because social media, Facebook, Twitter, has and, and, and BBM has massaged our life of laziness. Something you can get up and do. You see a lot of people just to walk from one place to the other. You are taking a bike. Huh? Laziness. It's not like you are in a hurry for anything. You just load your phone and sit down in the afternoon. You are not walking. You are not doing anything. You are a liability to everybody around you. And you are just, you are, you are sending Yarrow boys as a student, for instance, to go and buy you Mr. Biggs. Four, five thousand. They bring everything. You lie down with phone that you forced out of your father or mother and you are making calls in the daytime. Even a worker is not doing that. You ping your life out and the person you are pinging is in the office making money. You are there struggling. The day you call him, he stops responding to you. Please don't be a liability to anybody this year. Whoever has been ignoring you is because you are becoming a pest. Rise up and begin to be hardworking and you will become friends again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Especially for the brothers. Brothers, say amen. amen. Let me talk to you for one minute before we start praying. This year, please, please, something must change. There are some people, sir, five years, six years, no job. Not because they, they have never taken their CV anywhere. Say, but my uncle said it now. That uncle said it's wicked. You came to stay in your friend's house. When you stayed in his house, he was a student. He graduated, served, and is working. You are still staying in his house. He has gotten a job. You are still staying in his house. Whoever that friend is, drive that person out. After miracle service, tell him in the name of Jesus Christ, I appreciate you. Three years is enough time for you to sit down. Get Koinonia messages 2012, 13, 14. It will liberate you. Please, out of my house. Sometimes you need to push some people into their breakthrough over pampering destroys hallelujah over pampering destroys there are times you need to get up and challenge yourself they send you money in two weeks you're already calling again laziness you won't do anything you hear that there is scholarship free there are many graduates many graduates you win is out they won't apply i think it finished today they won't do anything you said god told you you'll be an entrepreneur Huh? and you are not doing anything you've never gotten up to go for any seminar to build yourself you see a seminar you reject it you are not watching anything on youtube you are not going to sit and learn under people you are just sitting down bragging around with nonsense that's what a lot of young people are doing around huh? god blesses you with fifty thousand that can start something that can bless you you use it and buy a suit to prove a point to the people who are busy building their destinies they are not even seeing the point. You must change this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear and laziness. We are going to pray. Three serious prayer points. The moment we pray these three prayer points, the night will start with the sick people. We will start ministering to the sick people. As soon as we pray the three prayer points, please begin to write your prayer requests while we minister. Those outside, can you shout hallelujah? One more time, shout hallelujah. The Lord will visit you in a mighty way in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Success is not automatic. There are laws. There are laws. This is our year of the rain. God has spoken to us. Shown us the loopholes. Lift your hands and begin to thank God for this word tonight. He that he loves, he chastises. Bless his name. 
bless his name lift your hands inside and outside bless the name of the lord thank you father for this word it has come to clean me up it has come to purify me it has come to challenge me hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord prayer point number one say after me in the name of jesus please say it like you believe it in the name of jesus i receive grace to align my mindset to that of the word of god every thinking pattern every thought process that is not of god i challenge you in the name of jesus lift your voice and begin to pray father give me the mindset of victory i'm tired of carrying ideologies some of us have ideologies about church we have ideologies about praying in tongues ideologies about the holy spirit ideologies about prosperity ideologies about miracles ideologies about responsibility about marriage that are antagonistic to the ways of god the first miracle tonight is to pray i submit my mentality i submit my thought pattern please pray pray from your heart i refuse to be limited there is still a place for champions in life there is still a place for the great but you can never rise above your thought pattern you can never rise above your ideology you may have held on to it for years it's time to probe your ideologies it's time to probe your ideologies it's time to re-examine your mindset let this mind be in me that was in christ jesus the mindset of victory i don't see defeat in my life i don't see defeat with god i am unlimited with god i am unbeatable with god i am a champion ay, 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 ay. pray rejoice not over me my enemies for though i fall yet i will rise again hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two you are going to challenge that spirit of laziness are you getting my point fear and laziness let's combine it together say after me in the name of jesus i challenge every spirit of fear for god has not given me the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind therefore i declare that fear is banished from my life i refuse to fear and i challenge laziness from today i receive the grace to be diligent no more laziness it's time to take action lift your voice and begin to pray time to take action 2015 time to take financial steps 2015 time to take spiritual steps 2015 time to take intellectual steps Go ahead and pray. 
Oh, in the name of Jesus, I cause the spirit of fear, fear of death, fear of past failure, every intimidation. Inside and outside, pray, pray. I cause the spirit of fear. I cause the spirit of fear. I'm a champion. I can make it. I can break barriers. I can break barriers. I am well able. I am not weak. I am strong in the strength of the Lord. And I cause laziness. I cause laziness. Laziness to study the word. Spiritual laziness. Mental laziness. Physical laziness. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. As we pray this prayer point, my goodness, I already sense the power of God in a mighty way. That's right. As we pray this very prayer point, the healing power of God will begin to move. Hallelujah. I'm going to request those who are sick, those who came specifically for healing, you will find your way as, hold on, let's pray first before you come i'd like you to come believing that you will part with that sickness forever hallelujah the last prayer point say in the name of jesus oh god reveal to me the strategy for possessing my blessing reveal to me the strategy in the name of jesus lift your voice and pray Lord, I cry. What is the strategy? What is the strategy? Come on, pray, Koinonia. I cry unto the spirit of wisdom. Show me the strategy for my prosperity. Show me the strategy for my blessing. Show me the strategy for my lifting. Show me the strategy to get the attention of my destiny help us show me the strategy for the church growth show me the strategy for the expansion of my business show me the strategy for five points show me strategy for first class show me the strategy to pass the jump show me the strategy hey, yeah, 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 hey. show me the strategy to unlock my marital destiny show me the strategy to unlock my marital destiny pray show me the strategy oh yes the strategy is revealed in the place of prayer in the place of prayer Make sure you are praying tonight. Show me the strategy to open me up to the next level of destiny. Show me the strategy. I'm tired of making mistakes. I'm tired of moving in circles. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. I'm tired of marking time. It's time to break forth. Hallelujah. Begin to pray now and say, God, visit me. We are going to do, the Holy Ghost will do a very quick walk. Very quick walk. Hallelujah. Those who are sick, I'd like you to come up and line up here. Very quickly. If you came here for the miracle service for healing, please come and line up. Ushers, help them, coordinate them. Let's have it very quickly. While that is happening, make sure you write your request. There is a mystery of answered prayer in this house. Make sure, please. 
if you have not written your prayer request start writing it i don't care what the situation is i like you to write it and let's drop it before god you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy oh mighty god you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. hallelujah those of you in front i know you came here because of the testimonies you have had i want you to know that your situation will not be different are you hearing what i'm saying i want you to believe in the power of god there are certain conditions listen to me there are conditions in this place that are entirely demonic hallelujah it's going to be a fast one i don't know if we'll have time to take testimonies or not but because there, I, I really, I really, really need to rush with time and let's do a lot. Please, if we end late today, I apologize in advance. We'll do our best to kill time, but please, wait because God has something to do in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we give you praise. It's called a miracle service. We thank you for the anointing of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Everybody, make sure you participate now if there if you have loved ones who are sick you can connect you can tell them to connect praise the lord you don't need to come out for them but you can call them or do whatever and tell them look connect to what god is doing hallelujah we bless the name of the lord worship team help us praise the lord father we give you all the praise and we trust you to glorify the name of your son right now in jesus name go ahead please who brought this lady who brought this lady who came with her please if you brought somebody let's know please we are not faking it here what's what's wrong with her legs who brought her my dear look at me what's wrong with your leg huh? you what your leg is swollen i'm looking in the spirit and i'm seeing a charm look at me what what did you say you sat in what I woke up. So they you woke up and you saw your leg. leg. It's not a wound. This is a charm. In the name of Jesus, I break it. I curse it. Look at me. You've not been able to walk. I, I can walk. Okay, look at I me. Keep coming out look at me. Pause. It's coming out with pause. I curse it. Look at me. Just look at me. Keep your legs. Just look at me. Don't look at your legs. Look at me. Look at me. Not, don't look at the legs. In the name of Jesus, walk. Come. come. Just come. Don't look at me. Look at me. Come. Walk. Come on. Give Jesus praise. Look at what is happening. <laughs> See, she's even surprised. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Can you climb up here? Climb by yourself. It's witchcraft. Don't be afraid. Help her if she needs any help. Okay, come. Move your legs. Just do what I'm doing. Move your legs. Move your legs. I curse that devil in the name of Jesus Christ. I break that power of witchcraft right now. I release that. Come on now, Koinonia. Give Jesus praise. God is healing people in this place. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that anyone that has orchestrated anything for you to fall into in the name of Jesus Christ, this night I command those powers to be broken in the name of Jesus. My dear, it never returns to you again. And this veil that I see over you in the spirit, I command that veil to go now in the name of Jesus Christ. Give God praise. Help us worship him. Please, let's hold
happened to him. Tell, you are the one who brought him. No, no, no. Talk, talk on his behalf. Let's save time, please. Okay. Our time. Say that I have been sick since 1980. 1998. 1998. Yes. Is he hearing what I'm saying? He's hearing. Okay. Again. Bless you, Daddy. Since 1998, what's yes. the sickness? Liver. Liver problem. Liver problem, sir. Sir, what what are the symptoms? What happens to him? Okay, sir. The belly was swelling. Okay. Mm. I'm going to pray for you okay. right now. Mm. When I pray for you, that swelling will go down now. Now. And you'll be able to walk. In the name of Jesus Christ. I curse that spirit. You are a spirit. Answer to the name of Jesus right now. I command the swollen stomach to go down right now. You see what is happening to you? In the name of Jesus, the heat sensation you're feeling is the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. Heal right now. Sir, please come. Because the devil wants to use this and put stroke on you. Um, would you mind if, if I ask you to jump? Will you jump? Okay. Just just try. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Just lift it as high as you can. Look at me. Don't look at the legs. Go ahead, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. Alright, let's let's try. Just jump a little. Don't be afraid. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now walk, sir. Come. Just walk as fast as you can. As fast as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ. My God is awesome. You are healed completely. In the name awesome. of Jesus Christ. as I stepped here, I saw this woman tied from head to toe. This is what I'm seeing. Head to toe. And I'm seeing blood all over you. This is what the Lord is ministering to me. What's wrong with her? Um, suddenly, she just grows lean like this. Mommy, There's look no at me. Ache. You will not die. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Just hold it. Look at me. Just look at me. Thank you, Jesus. Now I cost this power. Kalabata Kotobaya. Let mama go now. In the name of Jesus. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. I cost that spirit. Let her go now. I lose you. What couldn't she do? Like Parkinson's disease. Mama, in the name of Jesus Christ. Walk. Come. 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 Clam by yourself. Come. 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 Follow me. Just follow me, Mama. Look at this. Come on now, Koinonia. Give God praise. Can you lift your hands? See, she's laughing. Try to lift your hands, Mama. Can you lift your hands? Can you lift your hands? Is it which of the hands can she lift? Okay, go ahead. Lift, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Bring it down. Lift your hands. Come on, Koinonia. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. In the name of Jesus, look at me. Lift your legs. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. I cause that spirit. Mama is released right now. Koinonia, give God praise. Let's celebrate what God is doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that power. Come, I need to pray for you too. Your mother, right? I pray for you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I'm seeing this thing. If I don't pray for you, it will affect you too. Right now, I curse. Lord, he's a worker in this house. Therefore, I curse that spirit. You are a sister. Lift your hands. If I don't pray for you, you have problem with marriage. You are young now, but we need to pray. This thing is the whole family thing. Out! 
in the name of Jesus Christ I release you from this act of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ salvation returns to this family go ahead and massage her leg hallelujah please we are going to really really be fast as soon as we pray for you just give room usher start collecting the prayer request if you have somebody's picture as I come I may not be able to talk again and so we'll just lay our hands believe God believe God that the situation will change in Jesus name my God is father careful although there is an iron in your leg in the name of Jesus may there be a miracle I command this shorter leg to grow out now by the spirit of God madam look at me do you want to try walking uh -uh. I'm not asking you, what you, have. you came here because you believe God can help you is that true you believe that Okay, as careful as you can, move your legs. You are, you are related to her? Come. Who are you? You are sister, madam? All right. Don't cry. Don't cry. Please. Come, madam. Do you feel pain? You feel pain because of the iron. It's difficult now for us to... But after I pray for you, can you talk to the doctors to look at your legs and look at the iron? They'll be coming on Wednesday. Okay, fine. Father, in the name of Jesus, we agree. That as they come on Wednesday and check this leg, they will remove this iron and she will walk normally. Look at, look at this. Look at what the power of God is doing. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse that spirit. Let there be a miracle right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her have a seat. Please quickly, let's, let's save time. Worship team, help us. Let's not have... They will remove the iron, madam, and you will walk normally. In the name of Jesus Christ. I need to pray for you. Yes, I need to pray for you, madam. Because as I'm looking at you, I'm seeing pains. I'm seeing pains. Um, like abdominal pains. And the Lord is asking me to minister to you. Can I pray for you? Hold my hands. Jesus, do a miracle right now. I cause that pain by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please just line them forward. Let them just come forward in the name of Jesus. I don't need to ask you what the situation is. I really want you to believe that. Praise the Lord. I, I don't want you to think that maybe if I don't ask you, it means I don't give value to you. No. It's not even me doing the miracle. Right? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Such an awesome God. Such an awesome God. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. Rise up, everybody. 
we are going to cause every wicked power please listen hallelujah look at me I told us that one of the benefits and the blessings of prayer is the ability to cause limiting powers it's called a miracle service and this is January hallelujah we believe in the full gospel and everything Jesus died to give listen every power that has tied anyone's destiny down it's time for it to go are you listening to me lift your voice and pray in one minute go ahead and pray and say father every spirit that is not of God looming around my life and my family please make sure you are praying that as the word of God comes now there will be mighty mighty deliverance Lord, let there be deliverances. Break limitations over people's lives. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 The reason why the reason why we do deliverance is not is not working against the fact that Jesus says we are this and that and that it is on the strength of that the Bible says although he has put all things under his feet he said we do not yet know I hear a lot of people criticize the ministry of deliverance and all of that um, while I know that there are exaggerations here and there let me tell you something the people of God must be subjected to the full weight of all that God's power and anointing can do are you following me now there are people who have struggled here. You love God, but doors will just not open. Let me tell you, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. And by the grace of God, by the grace of God, I'm going to minister to people right now. I see an angel of the Lord moving, and a lady is going to shout. I don't know why God does these things. Under the anointing. When that happens... It's a sign that the Spirit of God is ready to move and deliver people. Lift your hands. Hear me, brothers and sisters. It takes the power of God to subdue principalities. And there are some of you right now, both for you and your family, there are forces that will not let you go. But this night and right now my goodness there is the fire of the spirit at the count of three it's not just a recitation you're going to shout that name the name that paid access for your liberty bring up bring them out my goodness deliverance is already happening inside and outside there will be mighty angels there is the sword of the spirit lord let there be deliverance every family Every destiny tied under any yoke of bondage, I invoke it in the spirit that at the count of three, those devils are under fire. One, two, three. Come out now. I command powers. Be gone now. I cause principalities. I cause spirits, I cause powers inside, outside. The angel of the Lord is moving. I command witchcraft. Bring them out. Spirits of ancestry. In the name of Jesus. The powers that have tied down man's destinies. The forces that have refused to let you go right now. I come with an apostolic anointing and in the name that is above all names let fire fall from heaven over your life over your academics over your marriage through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves lift your hands was he shouting one more time? Please bring them. Listen, for some of you, what will happen right now? 
it's not just for you alone but for your family just keep them down there hallelujah Malakata. and I see this affecting many ladies because I see marriage is being tied Makoto Tobakata Sheketelekaya as you shout that name Jesus you may not even know that that thing is in your family but all of a sudden physical fire physical fire will begin to burn right now on the count of three I challenge those powers one two three go 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 I cause that spirit delay delay I cause that spirit inside and outside I command that devil of delay to go now I command that power tying your destiny I command that power tying your breakthrough I command that power tying your family the price has been paid by the blood of Jesus I break every legal access by the blood of Jesus I break every legal access by the blood of Jesus I break every legal access by the blood of Jesus I release marriages I release miracles I command breakthrough fire is burning I command breakthrough I set those altars on fire I set those covens on fire hallelujah lift your hands where are those who have been oppressed academically lord where are they there are people who would have moved forward as i speak right now fire is coming on people fire is coming release the academics now release the academics now release the academics now 2015 the year of the rain release the academics now I command those powers. I challenge them. They must sleep now. There is a family the Lord is showing me. You have been under stagnation for 10 years. 10 solid years. But as I prophesy right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I command that family to be released now. I command that family to be released now. I command that family to be released now. Hallelujah. In the name that is above all names, I pray and I prophesy. The Lord is showing me men whose hands have been tied. And, and see, when your hands are tied, it means the capacity for favor and the capacity to move forward is not there. Lift your hands. Some of you will feel physical fire physical fire on your hands they are chains burning lord where are they let the sword of favor break them free from every oppression right now as i speak anyone whose hands are tied in the spirit i command those hands to be loose now i command those hands to be loose now the fire is falling Falling, falling inside and outside, falling. I break the chain. My goodness, there are angels outside. The fire is falling. Chains of delay. 
Rakato pate te te to prete te te to rape te kita makato prete te te Alleluia, Alleluia. In one minute, lift up the exact situation you want God to change. Begin to talk to Him. Go ahead before prophecy comes. Please don't keep quiet. No matter how impossible it is, there is an anointing. Inside and outside, make sure you are talking to the Lord. This and that and that are my requests. Do a miracle. Some of you need a 24 hour miracle. Now, all those here in front, in the name of Jesus. And by the fire of the Holy Spirit, at the count of three, not only will those devils leave, they must release your family members. I speak to every spirit. You know my voice. I represent the embassy of heaven. And in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, you will leave now. One, two, three. Go, go, go. Go, go. Go, go. Never to return. Never to return. Never to return. Never to return. Go. Go. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards this request. Your requests are there. Please, in case you've not dropped yours, locate it quickly to the ushers. It's not a ritual. There is a mystery of answered prayer. Hallelujah. The Bible says how that Ezekiah took the request before God the threats may be joblessness it may be impossible situations as I kneel upon this request and we pray together just for one or two minutes see I assure you I assure you you will return with a testimony except you refuse to come and testify stretch your hands and begin to pray thank you Jesus Remember last week we thought that words activate spiritual laws. Hallelujah. I want you to receive. For some of you, there will be an instant performance in the name of Jesus. I want to start by praying for families. Every family that has been in a state of stagnation, please lift your hands inside and outside. I'm prophesying now. Every family represented in this place in the name of jesus christ in this year of the rain i command 
that between now and next month miracle service let there be dramatic breakthroughs let there be dramatic breakthroughs let there be dramatic breakthroughs by the agency of the spirit we activate every law that needs to be in motion in the name of jesus the laws of favor the laws of destiny help us in the name of jesus i pray anyone here who has been under any academic bondage from secondary school to master's phd right now in this year of the rain i command speed for you i declare move forward now move forward now make progress now move forward now in the name of jesus i pray for anything that has died in your hands business the works of your hands relationships in the name that is above all names let resurrection happen in your life now please believe what i'm saying believe what i'm saying god is changing people's situations this is how god changes situations by the power of his prophetic word i say it again whatever has died i speak to that which was dead come back to life now better days oh yes god is changing everyone's story status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better days no matter where your family has been prophesy it status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better days i'm on my way i'm on my way The master key to attracting uncommon favor please make reference to my teaching activating seasons of greatness there I teach that the key to greatness in life is favor and I teach that there are two dimensions of favor there is favor with God and favor with men the Bible says and the boy Jesus grew in wisdom in stature and in favor with God and men I told you that it is possible to have favor with God and not have favor with men. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. So, I told us that the key to having favor with God, there are three things that I taught us. I'm just recapping on the teaching. Three things. Number one, I told us is called the fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence. Reverence. Priority. Respect for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two, I told us our tithing. 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 I can't remember what I said the third one was. But then, I remember teaching us that when it comes to favor with men, there is a requirement and the Lord asked me to recap it. I'm telling you, God has an agenda with us this year. Praise the Lord. God wants to break barriers and not only cause us to be healing people and bless people, but God wants to make people and families prosper. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a very serious issue in many families. And I told you this is better. Praise the Lord. 
Diligence. Everybody say diligence. We are going to talk a bit, just a few minutes on diligence. What is diligence? Diligence is the virtue of hard work. The virtue of thoroughness. Diligence and mastery, really. Diligence and mastery. The ultimate key to attracting uncommon favor in this realm and in this system, please pay attention, is diligence and mastery. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, one of the things that God has helped us to understand is the balance and understanding on how the kingdom works, the components of the kingdom. Now, we have a lot of people who leave everything all to God. They say, Jesus has died. He's paid all the price. He should come to me freely. You will, you will be broke and you will fail in life. If that is the circumference of your belief about God. On the other hand, we have people who are just hustlers. They want to make it by any means. And they throw away the God factor. Both are wrong. Are you getting me? Diligence and mastery. Two keys. I've been challenging us last, um, I think it was last week. I did challenge us in this light again. Um, what is mastery? Mastery means comprehensive knowledge or skill in a subject or area. Comprehensive knowledge, skill, proficiency, competence. Genesis 41, please quickly. Genesis 41 from verse 36 to 46, just 10 verses. And let's look at one case study in the Bible. Genesis 41. There was a man in the Bible called Joseph. Forty-one thirty-six from verse 36. Okay, let's read very quickly. This was Joseph now revealing and interpreting the dream of Pharaoh. Verse 36 says, And that food shall be for storage in the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not in famine. Verse 37. The Bible says, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. 38. Can we read together if you're there? One to read. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this in whom the spirit of God is? He said, can we find such a person? Joseph began to give an interpretation of the dream. And he said, this interpretation means there will be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. Now, Pharaoh, here is my solution. Find a man discreet and wise and set him over this project that during the seven years they will gather plenty and during the seven years of famine they will be able to enjoy. And Pharaoh said, who is the person? In other words, he threw a challenge to the entire Egypt. Can we find such a man if you know you are that qualified, if you know you are that proficient, step up. No race was mentioned. He didn't say if you are an Egyptian or if you are a Jew. He said, can we find such a person? I want to bless that person. I want to lift and promote that person. But can we find such a diligent person? Such a skilled person. Such a proficient person. And the Bible says there was none. And then, verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown thee this thing, there is none such so discreet and wise as thou art. He was not just lifted because he was, a, he was a, of, of the covenant and, and all of that. No. 
the Bible says the king testified, Pharaoh, he said there is none, there is none who is as discreet and wise. And because of that, verse 40, thou shalt be over my house immediately. No board meeting, no discussion. Are you getting what I'm saying? Thou shalt be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne shall I be greater than thou. 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of authority, and put it on Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. 44. 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had. And he cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Verse 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. Look at that. 45 says, And Pharaoh called Joseph, you know, called him all the name. And he gave unto him his wife, Asenath, and the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. And Joseph went all over the land of Egypt. The last verse. And Joseph was how many years old? How many years old? Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out of the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the entire land of Egypt. Everybody say diligence. Say proficiency. Listen to me. The world that we live in right now, if you want the favor, favor, that's the reward system of the kingdom. The favor of God. Many people have been taught that favor just means unmerited access. I told you that you need to get my teachings, the full gospel. There I give you a balanced view of the dimension of God's grace and favor. Because I told you every Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life without a partnership on your own part is an irresponsible Christianity. Read from Genesis to Revelation. Every time God wanted to bless a man, he demanded partnership on his own part. Is that true? It's not all up to God. And it's not all up to you. Your own part is to be diligent. To gain mastery. Hallelujah. I began to teach last week and I said that there are so many people in the body of Christ they are poor, they are average, they are poor at their place of work, they are poor and, 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 and in, in, in different endeavors that they do. Different ministers of the gospel, they want crowd, they want grace, they want fame, they want popularity, but there is no diligence. No diligence. No mastery. Right? A man of God comes to stand on stage and says, don't worry, don't mind what I'm saying, just believe that the power of God will touch you. Let me tell you something. When you see a congregation gather like this, they are a mixed multitude. Not everybody is a daft. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are people who work with God. There are people who are intellectuals. There are people who are committed to making an impact. I told you excellence is a language. Those who are excellent understand the language. It calls a certain kind of people to your sphere of influence. Is God speaking to us now? God wants to prosper us. But let me tell you, our part of the equation is that we must contend for mastery. We must contend for diligence. Joseph, so many people in Egypt, the question I always ask is, didn't Pharaoh have a son? The Bible may not give us that record, but at least as a Pharaoh, he should be married. Is that true? For him to have neglected his son, and to make Joseph a prize. It wasn't just because he loved Joseph. It was because if he did not exalt Joseph to solve that problem, Egypt would die in famine. Listen, let me tell you. Diligence will make men overlook your age. Diligence and mastery will make men overlook your gender. They will overlook a lot of flaws in your life because you have something that cannot be rejected. God speaking to us. 
Can we find such a man that is exceptionally excellent? Can we find that exceptional banker? Can we find that exceptional lecturer? Can we find that exceptional student? Can we find that exceptional man of God? Gone are the days where people think ministry is for daft people. You submit your CV. There's no job. They drive you everywhere. And you just say, well, since they've rejected me everywhere, let me go to the vineyard. Ministry is not for idiots. Ministry is not for foolish people. This is the wrong mindset that has been given about ministry. Whenever they see people going into ministry, they think that they have failed and they don't know what to do in their lives. They didn't give them a job and they said, let's go into the vineyard. The Bible says he gave unto one five. He gave unto one two. He gave unto one one according to their several ability. He had tested them through time and found out that some were more proficient than others. You must hate and fight mediocrity out of your life, especially in this season of God's glory. Hallelujah. It's good to pray. It's good to fast. But you must be diligent. You must be excellent. You must do everything you do with uncanny mastery. The minimum standard in the world today is mastery. Exceptional diligence. While others are looking for jobs and crying, there are other people jobs are looking for. I know someone in this country, I was sharing with the school of ministry students last year. He does three jobs and works only three times a day. His minimum salary for one of them is 500000 Minimum. He does the job at his terms. The day he coughs, the whole company will go bankrupt. Everybody say mastery. Is God challenging us? When I came in, I was blessed when I heard our sister's testimony about the changes that was happening in our office. The Bible says you are the light. Say I am the light. You are the light does not just mean you are anointed. It means that you are exceptional enough. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is gaining influence. I've told you this. The weapon of kingdom advancement is influence. Because influence is the ability, listen to me, influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies, to buy into your perspectives about life. When you are a man of influence, you sustain an ability that causes men to love your God, to love your principles. That's influence. The kingdom isn't just going to be advanced by sharing tracts. Right? And I told the Lord, I will never pastor a weak congregation. People who are broke, suffering, failures in life, but are just crying and say, Lord, we love you. Sooner or later, it will affect you. When there is no food in your house, you will not be able to fast. You see, the reason is because a number of people have others who are giving them money. Uncle or auntie. Remember we spoke last, last, um, last week, right? Dependency mentality. Take responsibility over your destiny and make up your mind to be diligent. A lot of people blame God and say, my, my boss is in the same koinonia with me and he can't lift me. He won't lift you because you are a member of koinonia. He will lift you because you are proficient and excellent. Praise the Lord. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You have to preach to yourself. I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You must be excellent. You must be excellent. Be exceptional. 
what you are trusting God to use to feed you, what you are trusting God, the value that you think you are adding to men, be exceptional. You claim God is calling you into the healing ministry. You are, you are average. The last time somebody got healed was five months ago. Right? No pressing. You, don't, you, are, not, you are not following the principles. There are so many men of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You give them the mic. They make blunders on stage. No Bible study. Prayer life zero. Right? They are comprehension of the truth. They don't study books. They don't read. They sleep and snore like every other lazy person. You will never be given a ministry. No, sir. Ministry is the highest responsibility in this earth. A president can only rule for four years and, and drop or eight years maximum. A minister is an envoy called to prepare God's people. There are many business people. I want to be a businessman. You write it in your room. CEO. No mastery. No diligence. They talk. They cannot articulate their value. Let me tell you something. If we do not challenge ourselves, we will keep dancing around in church, but Babylon will feed us. And I told you, whoever feeds you is the one you bow to. No matter what you claim to do in church. Joseph. Same story with Daniel. He ran through the dispensation of three kings and he was honored by them individually. Please refuse mediocrity. Challenge yourself. If God speaking to us, challenge yourself. First Kings 11. Let's quickly look at an interesting story again. First Kings chapter 11. Bible talks about an interesting man called Jeroboam. First Kings 11. Twenty-six to twenty-eight. You will have an encounter of a lifetime tonight. I tell you. Verse twenty-six. Are we there? It says, "And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephraimite of Zerada, Solomon's servant, whose mother, whose mother's name was Zeruah." A widow woman, even he lifted up his hands against the king. Now listen, there's no time to tell us the whole story. But the Bible tells us of the son of this widow called Jeroboam. And he said he was Solomon's servant. He was a servant. But watch what happened, verse 24. It says, and this was the cause that lifted up his hands against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches in the city of David his father verse 28 it says and the man Jeroboam was a what a mighty man of valor as a result and Solomon seeing the young man that he was what that he was what he didn't say that he was anointed he didn't say that he was a Jew he didn't say that he was a male he said he was a mighty man of valor do you know what it means for you to be called a mighty man of valor in ancient times? The Bible talks about the mighty man of David. One who fought single-handedly, threw down 800 people and a sword cleaved to his hands. The Bible talked about David of the tribe of Benjamin. The Bible tells us that the Benjamites, Bible history tells us that the, the Benjamites were so, were so fine in, in throwing slings, they could diverge an arrow with a sling. So it wasn't just that the anointing came upon David to kill Goliath. The anointing came upon something he had. Are you getting what I'm saying? Here the Bible says that Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon discerning that he was a mighty man of valor. What did he do? The Bible says in verse 28. Seeing the young man that he was industrious, advantageous, made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Jesus. Seeing that he was industrious. He said, no, 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 no. You can't be a, a servant just like the other people. You are so proficient beyond servanthood. And I lift you. You are the head of the house of Joseph. Diligence gives God room to bless you. Mastery shuts the mouth of critics. Mastery shuts the mouth of naysayers. 
You make the prophecy of your enemies a self-fulfilling prophecy when you waste your time arguing and defending yourself rather than sharpening your sword to gain mastery. Hallelujah. You must be proficient at your place of work, in ministry, in business. Pay the price. Don't run around looking for cheap success. Don't run around looking for quick money. Don't run around trying to claim what you are not. I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. There are so many people who look successful. Like the fig tree that Jesus saw. But when he came, he found no fruit in it. I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, every area the Lord wants to use me, I will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest. Hallelujah. A man of God, God wants to bless you. But there is no grace, no revelation. No, the personal contributions. You go for a meeting, a major conference, and waste the time of the people talking nonsense. And at the end of it, they say, uh, thank you for coming. Here's your honorarium. May the Lord bless you. And they will never invite you again. Never. God open doors, you close them by yourself. Let me tell you, both in the church and in the secular environment, the minimum standard is exceptional excellence. Minimum standard. Is God speaking to us? You're a hairstylist. Oh God, open the door for me. God is saying to wear. Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song... There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You to sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth. You come on stage and sing and make a lot of blunders and when you step down, they say, Kai, Ken, ah, that song. And you say, really? You, you see how you are deceiving yourself? We, our standards are very small so we, we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast because our standards are small you're a man of God you gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious you lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji emoji compared to what the day you go for a meeting they bring a blind person you pretend not to see the person praise the Lord Oh, I have an apostolic. You go for a crusade, you see them. And you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They line the sick people. They are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. Say, ah, did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. The Bible says at age 12. Is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, 
if the best student gets 11 over 100 if you do a speech and price who will take the first prize it will be said he took first correct but what grade did he get help me so he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking the Bible says study to show yourself approved Kabbalah Katayaba a workman who needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth pay attention to diligence pay attention to diligence don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself hallelujah raise the bar thank God you are a local champion in your community you are the best see the nations if you don't make room for the nations you will never be beyond the nations that's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members more than 100 members more than 500 members more than a thousand members because the capacity they have not made room for the blessing is God speaking to us please don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say this man is so wicked this guy just got a job in two months he's promoted him proficiency proficiency closely tied to that I spoke about laziness oh by the way Proverbs 22 verse 29 says see thou a man diligent in his business it gives you an assurance. It says you will not stand before mean men. Average people. Once you are diligent, it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. challenge yourself challenge yourself laziness Proverbs 10 verse 4 many young people in Nigeria are lazy lazy mentally lazy spiritually lazy physically lazy we're in a hurry to show quick success we're in a hurry to show that things are working life is not like that the Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will. Proverbs, Proverbs what? 10 verse 4, who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus, Proverbs, Proverbs after Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4, it says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand but the hand of the diligent make it rich. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, a lazy person, no inertia. He becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Shiva la kura sivranya na balala. 12 verse 11. Are you there? Say amen. Want to read. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. He said not slothful. The word slothful there means laggy. You are, not, you are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes. Right? He said not slothful in business. Diligent, fervent, zealous in spirit. Serving the Lord. So you want to serve the Lord? You want to serve his body? You must be competent. Please hate average. Let me tell you something. As you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth i've tried but compared to where god wants to take me the journey is still far it will help you to humble yourself whether they write apostle jakes bishop jakes right 
It's an ugly scene to see an incompetent person boasting. It's a very ugly scenario. My goal is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of, the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office at the bio, bio what? Biotech, that biotech place. And when I went in, I looked at his office and I looked at everything. I said, wow. It's not about size. It's about content. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's about content. At least I know that there is a project that they are on now. Projects of, of hundreds of millions. Competence. When you become competent, let me tell you brothers and sisters. All of a sudden, where you are coming from will never matter. Jeroboam, the Bible says his mother was a widow. Meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much. But competence. Please, there are many of us here, it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents. They didn't go to school. They done their best. Don't sit down in the average day and keep forcing your mother, your father, the poor people doing their best. Rise up and change your status. Don't just sing it as a song. Is God speaking to anyone here? I read the story of Joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people. Joseph was 30 years. 30 years. And as a matter of fact, out of that 30 years, about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave. What is your excuse? You are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen. What he just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches. And they will find him and not even ask, what is it? Nobody will ask whatever and say, come, we are willing to pay you. Huh? And you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say, Lord, this church, I already see my destiny. No matter what you saw in your dream, I guarantee you, if you are not diligent, you won't enter into it. Praise the Lord. You are a doctor. The first person you gave an injection had problem. Second person had problem. Third problem. Before you blame demons, we're going to there will be deliverance here shortly. But I told you that the biggest problem of Africa is blaming demons. You can't take demons to court, you can't arrest them. We we like the fact that they are invisible entities. We excuse our failures. Everything demons. You woke up by nine, I know it's a spirit that, that stopped me. Ha, I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly. As if it's your place. As if you are the director. You are, the CEO that will interview you was there by seven. You stroll around, you came late and said, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye great. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. 
at least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long. But the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place. Sharpen yourself. Become exceptional. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance. When John appeared with uncanny accuracy, he knew that this was Jesus. He said, behold the lamb. Behold the lamb. He didn't mistake Jesus for John the beloved. He didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath. And while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who are paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room. So that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. As you hold forth the word of life. Be competent. Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah! Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. 
Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. By the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do. That's what my Bible says. It said do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional. To deliver what is season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed. And have been graced. I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side is leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We are going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts. When you refine your abilities. When you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Sharpen yourself. And then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared, when you are ready, then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated and I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian, but because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming. And I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job. That they were paying him 5,000. I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. 
I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself, getting an exact blueprint of his assignment. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then together, his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he went about doing good, became invincible, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David my servant, Psalm 89 verse 20 downwards, and with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David since, but he had not done his work. Now I've found my servant, and with my holy oil I've anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle, the architect of that construction, he was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you, when God anoints your grace, he will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave, you become a city that is set on a hill that cannot, cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable, invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark for the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your play your own part and tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you like Saul you will go back and they will say ah is Saul also one of the prophets when did you enter this dimension favor is when preparation meets opportunity it's not magical it's a formula and God is calling us wipe the tears of your family Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that. You must make up your mind brothers and sisters. That something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service. I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent. By March calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace. Willing to pay any amount. Job or no job. There are people who are not working. But they are getting the salary of CEOs. Because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you. It says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you. And they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school. Or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? master whatever he has given you and tonight an anointing comes on it and I send you like the foxes of Samson and you will step in and begin to do wonders the pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar I've said it again and again that true leadership the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders not maintain followers 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry. Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Shekele Barababa. Never will I be termed forgotten, but I will be called Pula. Pula, the land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business, mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. Exceptional 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 i'm an ambassador i represent the parliament of heaven and i represent god at the highest level of excellence pray koinonia as you cry upon him he grants you grace Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happened to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence exceptional competence don't let any man preach you against competence incompetence will make you poor incompetence will make you angry incompetence will make you a failure incompetence will make you average I must stand out. I must stand out in my generation. I must stand out because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I like you to pray. Pray. 
for grace to be outstanding lift your voice grace to be outstanding forget about the pain of today the bible says for our light afflictions which is what for a moment walk at in us a far more exceeding weight of glory pray why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal subject to change the closed door is subject to change when you are competent nations will celebrate you without bias they will celebrate you they will demand your grace they will pay for it the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials, sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. Hallelujah. Insist that you must be touched this night. Insist that something must change. It doesn't take time. It just takes one encounter. You came with a lot of challenges. Don't sit down and waste your time. Make sure you cry unto God. Tell the Lord exactly what you want tonight. Go ahead. Please speak to the Lord, especially for those standing outside. Make sure you talk to him. I feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear We see the rain of your love We feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear So let it rain The floodgates of heaven Let it rain Let it rain Open the floodgates of heaven Let it rain Let it rain
Alleluia. Alleluia. Listen, I don't care what the issue is. Let your faith rise right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I see sick people all around inside and outside and I see all kinds of people. But I want you to know tonight that the God of wonders is still in this place. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. your hands everyone hallelujah listen Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself. But for your family members, all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil, every covenant, every spell at the count of three, let the fire of God separate those people right now. One, two, three. Shake those devils. I command those forces in the name of Jesus. I cast out those devils. Bring them out. The fire is falling on witchcraft outside. The fire is falling. Every power that is not of God. I send the rod of judgment. Every power that is not of God, everyone standing upon this ground, I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus. Satan, let God's people go. There's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere. There is no hiding place, not for witchcraft. There is no hiding place. I command judgment. Let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains. Hallelujah. I see a lot of chains. Lift your hands again. I see chains. So many chains. Break. Chains. Listen, 
some of you this change has lasted for years and decades i don't care how long it has been as you shout that name again i see many people outside you will know the chain has broken that embargo over your family you will know it when it happens because i hear sounds of change at the count of three shout that name again with all your might and i command that as they shout may those chains break one two three chains of stagnation chains. Hear me, listen. Listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus, now over families, any family under the sound of my voice, you have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am and I command judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families, Release the of families, the of families. the blood that the blood of we invoke better the blood that speaks better things. Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what seest thou? Zechariah 1 18. It says, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem. So that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. And they will terrorize those horns. We have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness. They must let you go. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. He said, yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt. And after that, he will let you go. Jesus paid the price in full completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. And we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue. In the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families no matter how long the blood of jesus annihilates the legal hold you have i don't care what covenant you have in the name of jesus therefore i speak to every foul spirit 
that at the count of three, you let them go never to return. Right now in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Out you go. Out you go. Out you go. Never to return. Out you go. By the ministry of the blood. By the ministry of the blood. I cost you. By the ministry of the blood, release the families, release their finances, release their destinies. Go now, go now. I compel you by the blood of Jesus. Opens the gates of captivity. That blood opens that gate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every family under bond is free. I don't care how long the doors have been closed. We open it now. You will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely healed. Stephanie, Stephanie, I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish fast. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like, is it four children or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours, if it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify. And let's know if there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. Shut up. Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. Do you know that there is a call of God upon the family? Not just your mother, but upon the family. And it's a prophetic call. It's a prophetic call. Right? It's not only your mother. I didn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know you people. But the hand of God is going to come upon you. It's a mighty anointing of the spirit. It will come upon you. Are you part of the family? Huh? You are related. You are what? You are your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come. Come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? the Lord is going to lift you why am I seeing a ring in your hand I'm not seeing a physical ring but it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring your wedding bells are ringing are you married huh this is what I'm <laughs> we don't feel embarrassed we are a family marriage is not a bad thing Abi mommy is it a bad thing it's not a bad thing because there is nobody 
and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart, where is the person? Listen, he said, we see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen, listen, my dear, you don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, he will make it happen. My brother, this year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does, what, what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. It, this one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now. Because they have been talking about this woman. She sees. And people have been saying she's fake. I'm saying, if this woman is fake, she will not enter this place. I guarantee you. Except I'm not a man of God. Please, she's not fake. What she needs is, is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God. So that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened. She has a lot of prophetic insight. But the word level is very low. So there is dwindling. That stability in the spirit is not there. That's all. This mama is not fake. Because I'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing. Very powerfully. Come, madam, come. Let's pray to the king. You have taken all the glory. You have taken Hold hands, both of you. I show you a mystery. Madila Katabarata. Jembra Mato Zatali Kaparando Skolapaya. Mambro no supaya. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together, it's a happy anointing that is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing drink of that wine right now in the name of Jesus Christ don't be afraid to help her you won't be with her forever but the Lord is going to lift you in due season and you will begin to see in a strange way may the Lord bless you may he anoint you in the name of Jesus Christ I break the embargo of darkness over the family come you are a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. Light shines in the darkness. You must release her. Let her go now. I'm seeing an old woman's face. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, you step into strange dimensions of grace. I command deliverance to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's all right. I bless this family. The Lord changes your story. You will return with dramatic testimonies in Jesus' name. Newi. I'm hearing the name of a place. There is there's Newi. I know it's an Igbo place, right? There is there is a there is somebody at, I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place. Newi. Who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, mama. She's your mother. What's wrong with her? Is this working? Please help us. She's having a problem with her legs. She's having problem with her legs. knee problems. Her legs. Oh. Her legs. Her Arthritis. You don't know. Yeah. You I love God. Yes. Very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God? Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's, let's not... Well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long? Left? Up to two years now. I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry, it's okay. 
Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me. Just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My Come on, give it. Praise the Lord. To break every chain. Break every chain. Let's go. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Yes. Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? <laughs> they just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request, not for money. Many of you will ask for money. I will give me money, sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. Eleven. Yes. And I have six graduates. I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. Eleven children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? Help us now. Where are the Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. What happened to him? It's okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? What happened to you? Uh, I fell sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. So we went for so many examinations. And they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. He said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, sir. So they've left you to the, die. Yes, sir. Cut off the, of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. 
I release strength to these legs in the name of Jesus. I release strength to these legs right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way. Bringing breakthroughs to you. Refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come, ma. Don't worry. God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy, look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. You know, come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this hole. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made. Let me yours. Please bring out. I give him, I give him, I give him the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, please. All those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jackson, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen, all of you standing, 
I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you the price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly, you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing. So you must focus. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Elijah said, if you can see me, don't, don't be distracted, please. Hallelujah. Please pass your request. Ushers, let's hurry up, please. Get them to the aisle. Just pass it to the last person. The last person by the side, please. Help the ushers inside and outside. It's not a ritual. There is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place. Please. Begin to pray in tongues as you do that, please. Everywhere. Begin to pray in tongues. All those connecting with us online, it's time for them to connect now so that we can... Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of no no I'm I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter. And brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long, let's do it very quickly. I have seen... God do strange things strange things in the lives of people we have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles please I want you to know the person you are praying to I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman it's not to an idol you are not praying to the president of this nation the king of kings is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am. I am Hallelujah. Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels. There are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Father, hear the prayers of your people. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles, supernatural jobs, supernatural lifting. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer will all flesh come. Every need, Lord, every pain. Lord, let things that look impossible by men. We pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hear that, though. We ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord. The blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs. Amazing, blessed jobs, Lord. Miracles, miracles, Lord. Healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls. Calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord. The needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. We ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God. Kabbalataya. He said it's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands as your level changes. Lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level, by the weapon of the prophetic, in the name of the Lord Jesus, 
I command those limitations broken. Human limitations, demonic limitations, I command them broken now. I command them broken now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. Mam bro, do sekete balakata. Listen. This proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen. That proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics. In the name that is above all names. We send angels to every department. Of every campus represented here. We send angels to every faculty. May they tear down, may they uproot every trace of wickedness. May they tear down, may they uproot in the name of Jesus. Let missing scripts be found. Let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. There are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. I cause fear from your life now. I cause fear from your life now. I cause fear I cause fear in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for you. There are many who have been praying. Lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence. There are people who have been crying. I don't want to waste my time in destiny. I pray for you. That through a night vision. Mysterious prophetic encounters. May your exact assignment be revealed. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are people praying right now. All you, are, you have come here for is the direction for the next level. You just came to get direction. I prophesy to you. The Bible says, and ye shall hear a voice from behind. Saying, this is the way. I command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God, that is making your helpers reject you, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I command them broken now. I command them broken now. Hallelujah. By the power of prophecy, I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension. Please take seriously what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, I connect you. I connect you. Business helpers, ministry helpers, academic helpers, marital helpers, receive the ministry. In the name of Jesus. Prophecy is like rain. Your job is to receive it. Once you receive it, it starts acting immediately in your life. Hallelujah. 
I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood I break you free from any covenant of infirmity I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of Jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you hallelujah I pray for your finances in the name of Jesus there are many who are giving you are tithing you are faithful but it just looks like when things are about to happen there are limitations in the name of the Lord Jesus I declare that beginning from next month I invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the Bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet I command mysteriously may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for everyone called dull in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the bible says and he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures i pray for you may understanding be granted unto you hallelujah favor the one factor that separates men that favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now may favor mantle you from now in the name of jesus financial favor marital favor academic favor favor in your job favor in ministry hallelujah everyone who is confused about life any aspect of life i bring that confusion to an end now i pray for all those who came here specifically trusting god for the fruit of the womb in fact i pray for you listen not just physical barrenness any area of your life this is the year of the rain and when rain falls barrenness stops therefore i command be fruitful in the name of jesus fruitful multiply replenish subdue and have dominion in the name of jesus i command everything called dead in your life and your family i don't care for how long it has died your health your business your life in the name of the lord jesus i command resurrection right now in the name of jesus christ i pray for you 
there are people who desire God you desire an encounter that's what you need you desire an encounter I pray for you may the angel of the Lord's presence visit you you may not understand what I'm saying may the angel of the Lord's presence visit you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for your gift your ability your skill whatever you are you that brings bread help her please I pray for you the works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer I put an anointing on your skill I put an anointing I put an anointing on your ability I put an anointing on your gift on your work on your skill may it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension hallelujah now lift your hands I just want to do an impartation there are people who have come from different places please be sensitive we are out of time we will soon round up but it's time to receive something listen listen I told you there will be many impartations hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference are you hearing what I'm saying no matter what you are doing when the grace is not there you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place help her please it's time for you to catch this thing for real it's yours for the taking listen I want to pray as I stretch my hands and pray inside and outside wherever you are you must not be in ministry like fivefold whatever area many of you will begin to have dreams encounters listen many of you will step into healing graces there's no time to move one by one but i'm going it's one of the major assignment god gave me tonight please believe it you will argue it at your own detriment there is a cheap route the help of god is here to lift you the help of god is here to take you lift your hands everybody father i pray that in the next two minutes let there be from the front to the back outside let there be strange impartations at the count of three one two three let the wind blow right now receive it prophetic graces apostolic graces shake it take it take it a protosia dreams visions encounters dreams visions encounters the word of knowledge gifts of the spirit let there be distributions right now right now right now the gift of wisdom the word of knowledge the working of miracles the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues the gift of prophecy gifts of healing healing mantles receive it receive it leadership anointings leadership anointings leadership anointings i impart it leadership anointings utterance 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 i release it to you utterance in the name of jesus to communicate the things of the spirit utterance receive it utterance i i release upon you insight into scriptures insight into the mysteries of the kingdom i grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit the mysteries of dominion the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of impact hallelujah
the final prayer I want to pray for you is honor. Many of you don't know what honor is. Honor is not the same thing as blessings. You can be blessed, but not honorable. It says, and chapters. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing.